The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. From Hollywood, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen of the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Jack Finney, Mel Blanc, Maria Muldoor, Jim Jensen, and Kermit the Frog, and Dr. Irwin Maxwell Stillman. And now, here's Johnny. You might, I'll tell you something, you might, you might as well forget it, I don't go all the way on the first joke. <laughs> Remember, the, who yelled, take it off up there? Oh, I thank you. Yeah. I thank you for that, that warm welcome. I wish I had something nice for you. But we'll do the monologue. Uh, you sound good tonight. Good crowd. Really, last night we had a, uh, it was a nice crowd, but hostile. Not, not hostile, uh, mean. Uh, there was kind of a crowd last night we had that would take the annual cardiac patient's field trip to see the exorcist. <laughs> Which will give you an idea. No, did you see that crowd last night? I've yes. never seen so many people in one sleeping bag in my life. <laughs> Game in here. Well, it was a little chilly here this morning in Los Angeles. Uh, How, um... That's I'll let the only group reason you it. come here is right. just to get that... Well, I said this morning, it was a little cold. I was up early. It was so cold, I saw a brass monkey thawing himself by sitting on my radiator. <laughs> you know what happens when it gets cold. <laughs> Thank you for being here, and I'll... Take... <laughs> you know, it was gorgeous today. You'll have to admit, in Los Angeles. Right. You see, the wind comes in. I don't know where it comes from. That's not the Santa Ana wind. That comes no, off the desert. just a regular wind. Just a regular wind, and it <laughs> blows all of the smog out of the basin, and the... Visibility today, you could see every Jack in the Box sign from here to Zuma Beach. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, I tried to take Ed to see The Exorcist the other night. He wouldn't go. He held out for Demon Rum. <laughs> You're possessed by, by the Gallo brothers, I think. <laughs> you know, we got to drive Ernest and Julio out of your system now. <laughs> well, let's see. Beg your pardon? I didn't hear that. Standing out here trying to do material, they're interested in why I'm standing. They don't care about it. <laughs> right. You're not standing right. What is this? Well, there's good news and bad news. Well, I'll give you the bad news first. The uh, cost of living has reached an all-time high. The good news is the cost of dying is still within everyone's reach. <laughs> I think it's kind of nice. No, the price of food is so bad. I saw Jack LaLanne today. He's so weak, he couldn't even break his own bread. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Boom. Yeah. Oh. What is this? No, you see, I just said he was so weak that you're supposed to do that before, you see, and then I do one of those. Woo! Man up there with a propeller and a beanie. So. <laughs> Here's an interesting item from Sweden. There's a town in Sweden that gives you gas if you donate blood. Is that wild? That's got to be crazy at a gas station. You drive in, and if you're quart low, you don't know whether it's you or the car. <laughs> now, ring-a-boom. <laughs> no, they stick a hose in your car, then in your arm. Ring-a-boom. <laughs> See if you like this one. Here's an item from New Haven, Connecticut, usually a town of a lot of laughter. <laughs> Oh, a judge ruled in New Haven, it was in the paper today, that a woman can get welfare as soon as she is pregnant. Isn't that an interesting decision? Uh, uh, I've heard a lot of lines to pick up girls, but... Hey, honey, you want to get on welfare? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Why don't you try a couple more off well, that, the star? That program falls under the jurisdiction of the H.E.W. What's that? Health Education Whoopee. <laughs> Let's see what else happened. Oh, you, you've heard me remark about our staff bachelor, Craig Tennis. Uh, Craig takes out a lot of interesting girls. Uh, not lookers. They're not the best looking girls. He's got a new girl. Not attractive, would you say? No. Let me put it this way. She is so ugly. <laughs> like if, if you, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> if you tied a whitefish around her neck, her cat still wouldn't go near it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ugly girl. That's ugly. We have a, uh, we have, she'll be wearing that suit, I'd get some laughs. We, uh, we're going to have a great show tonight. Don't let this, uh, give you any indication. This is just a little get acquainted. We were going to have George C. Scott on the show tonight to teach it, to teach a dolphin to speak. But Larry Zonka couldn't make it. And... <laughs> See, laughs aren't everything. Courage. That's what you need. What? It's a nice dress you have on. <laughs> okay, now, tonight on the show. Well, this is called self-defense night here. <laughs> Gotta come out of here with a bazooka just to face this crowd. <laughs> uh, tonight we have, this is a great show tonight. Mr. Jack Benny is here yeah. tonight. We have, uh, <laughs> along with, uh, along with the gentleman you've all know, you've heard his voice so many times, uh, uh, Bugs Bunny, uh, Porky the Pig. Uh, he does all the great cartoon voices. Was a regular on Jack show for many years. Mr. Mel Blank is here tonight. <laughs> the, uh, the singer uh, uh, is going to be very good, I think. She's a fine new talent. Maria Moldauer is with us tonight. We have Jim Henson and the Muppets, and Dr. Irwin Maxwell Stillman is here tonight. Yeah. So, but, and he'll be right here. So we'll be here. Usually, I applause is still going while I do this. <laughs> a word from Behold Furniture Polish to give your furniture a beautiful natural shine. Crowd's a little, uh, the joiners, this group. It's yeah, like the town is, uh, meeting of the year. Remember that on radio? They're a lot like that. Just yell out your thoughts. It's like a symposium yeah, tonight. Whatever. What's on your mind? Just yell it right out. Uh, if you just join us, we have Jack Benny, Mel Blank, Maria Muldauer, a new singer, uh, Jim Henson and the She's Muppets. Great. Yeah, she is. And Dr. Irwin Maxwell Stillman, who was supposed to be with us last night, but yeah. we ran late. But the good doctor stayed out here. Are you familiar with this? Have you got anything to say before we can get going? No. I'm anxious to hear what you're going to say. Are you really? Is well, that... you may be a cult of one. <laughs> This is, uh, I'm not familiar with this magazine. How I'm many of you know? with it, sure. Women, Women's World? Women's sure. World, is that a... Oh, that's a big magazine. Sure. I thought it was a new magazine. No, supermarkets. It's a new fine magazine. Well, they have so many articles in here today that, uh, aren't going to help it too much, I don't think. Here's one here called 25 Ways to Beat the January Blahs. Well, that's important. We all have that. It says, without doubt, January is the longest and dullest month of the year. The holidays are over, the company's gone, the sky is gray, Oh, that's kind of the rhymes there. And you're feeling glum, glum. Life is cold. In other words, they tell you what to do to get rid of the January the blahs. blahs. You got around to this very late. We could have helped this a couple of weeks ago. It's almost February. 
Well, we didn't think of this idea until... <laughs> come now. Right. There's a blah right there. We would, we would change it to February if, right. if we had to, just right. to get it in. Now, aren't, the, aren't these exciting? This is, they tell you here how to get... I'll get rolling. Don't, don't worry about... The rhythm's about, off a little bit. Dude. Rhythm's just a just little... Just a tiny bit. Little touch off. Yeah. What were you doing six months ago? Whatever it was, do it again. That's what they tell you Fair to do. Reread that novel uh, that, that you read at the lake last summer. It will remind you of quiet vacation days. Or read the novel you plan to read on vacation. That's what Woman Twirl says. This is going to go right into the pipe. <laughs> Your performance, though, I think, is aiding I, it. Performance is bound to help this. <laughs> yeah. Spend an afternoon with summer memories. Oh. Pull out the photo album with shots of last summer's picnics, parties, and events. You can meander through a whole summer's fun by going through your album. That's one of the things they think spring. You see, bright, fresh colors will go far to brighten up your mood. I'm going right in the toilet. <laughs> yes. uh, when windows must stay closed against the winter cold, add springtime your room with an air freshener. Now, isn't that a brilliant idea? Oh, yeah. How to get a, put an air freshener in your room. It gets better. They have some other more startling ones here. Don't just sit there, grow something. <laughs> Just when you're sure you'll never see a green leaf again, let alone a bushy tree. Grow your own greenery. That's what they tell you to do. Get organized. Oh, yes. Uh, do the things that you've been putting off. Uh, let's see. Even the setup is no good. <laughs> Go project mad. Instead of watching TV, plan and start a project. When you're feeling glum, don't force yourself to finish a chore you hate. I thought it was the other way around. If you're yeah. feeling bad, you should finish something. finish something. They say forget it. Yeah. Little things mean a lot. Let you get your hair cut. That's going to relieve the January blow. Yes, that's what they say. Buy wild new frames for your eyeglasses. <laughs> Rejuvenate an old suit. Now, you see, now, yeah. I don't know much about the magazine, but I think the problem is that they don't understand January at all. Well, I mean, they January nice is job. a bad month. They do. I, I think some things might be added to that article. Yes, that's what we thought, because... Normally, I would say that everything was covered in there, but in this particular article, I won't say that. No, and I'll tell you why, because they don't understand. January is a stinking month, and... I, uh, I knew you wouldn't spend that much time with all of that unless you had something else to tell us. <laughs> that's right. They've missed a lot of dandies. It, January's a bad month. But hopefully you have some remarks to add to that. I certainly do. We have some ways to beat the January blahs. <laughs> Make something hemorrhage. <laughs> See, now, I mean, you, this'll right this will pick you right up. Go into your bathroom and keep flushing the toilet until you make the tidy bowl man seasick. <laughs> there you go. Now we're going. That's it. It wasn't have in that article. It wasn't in there. Forget January by remembering August. Turn the heat up to 85, make a couple of gin and tonics, and use a red felt pen to draw prickly heat on your kids. <laughs> Build and install a window feeder for hungry peeping toms. <laughs> Sell air sick bags in the lobby of the exorcist. <laughs> Take your second car and turn it into a giant planter. You've got no other use for it anyway. <laughs> Can't get any gas. Feed pigeons Alka-Seltzer and watch them fizz on a statue. <laughs> <laughs> this will get you out of that January blouse. So you bet I'm rolling, fella. <laughs> Strap a Reader's Digest magazine to your knees and go to a Leprechaun Christian Science reading room. <laughs> Invite an oil company executive to your home, and when he asks for a drink, take him out to your car and siphon four gallons of gas down his throat. <laughs> and, of course, the best way to get through January is to drive naked through a stop sign, which will get you 30 days in jail, and you'll get out in February. <laughs> About it. There we are, you see. That covered it. That covered it. <laughs> oh, all right. Now we'll take a brief pause. Jack Benny's going to join us. He's got some uh, piece of uh, small film clip from his special coming up tomorrow night, Thursday on NBC. And uh, I think Jim uh, Jensen with the uh, Henson with the Muppets has also got some film and going to do some things. And would like to welcome a new sponsor to the show. Did you know we have a new sponsor? Big Penn. Good. Just want to know if you're up on this. Watch this. Now watch this one. <laughs>
first guest tonight is a, is a close friend, the husband of Mary Livingston, uh, star of the special which airs tomorrow night on NBC from 8 to 9 right here on this network. And in the worlds of music and comedy, he's a giant. Would you welcome Mr. Jack Benny? <laughs> You throw a kiss almost as good as Dinah Shore used to do. <laughs> Mwah! How are you? Johnny, I was watching you in the other room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that Jack LaLanne joke. <laughs> well, you got it. one Milton Berle won't take. <laughs> it's Although you read something in the book that I wish I could do. Which one was that? The line where it says, do something now that you haven't done in a long time, or something. <laughs> I won't ask I what I it could is. Do that. Uh, how are you? You're looking I'm good. Fine. We had more fun on your, uh, doing your special, which is on tomorrow uh, night. And in, in a few minutes, we'll show you. I don't know what you brought tonight. Freddie DeCordova told me you brought a little piece of the tape. And I didn't know you were going to leave this in the show. Yeah. Um, I got silly during First, the rehearsal. Oh, Can I do something? Sure, else? anything you want to do. Because that's why I brought out a c You know, I never smoke a cigar. You never really light them. You don't smoke. No, you carry them around. No, I smoke only a little bit of a cigar. And the last time I was on your show, I wanted to do a story, a joke about what happened when I drove here to be on your show, and I forgot about it. It has to do with a cigar. And I've twice I was going to do it and forgot, so this time I thought if I came out with a cigar, then I wouldn't forget it, you see? Well, what happened was, and, and don't go into, com into a commercial, because this only takes 40 minutes. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. But what happened was, you know, when I drive to come on your show, or drive to go to Burbank or anything, I always take Laurel Canyon right. or uh, the other one. Cold water? Cold water, water. Canyon. Now, let me tell you something that happened. This, I was really driving to come to your show. You're not supposed to smoke when you're driving through Coldwater Canyon. Yeah, it's a fire zone. They have big signs there. really not allowed to. Yeah. You get a ticket if a policeman stops you. And I had a cigar, and I was smoking, and I only take a couple of puffs, no matter how expensive. Now, this cigar, these are maybe three for a dollar. Now, that's fairly Dipes. expensive. That's fairly Free for a buck, yeah. But when I smoke a cigar, I only smoke just, uh, just a tiny bit. I only take a puff or two and I throw it away. And I'm driving through Coldwater Canyon, and I'm smoking. I know I shouldn't be, you see. And finally, I only had, I had a big piece of it left. I only smoked through it, and I threw it out of the window, right out on the street like this. And sure enough, a policeman comes along behind me, and he stops me, and he recognized me, and he laughed a little bit, you know, because he recognized me. He says, you know, Mr. Benny, you should know better than that. You know you must not smoke when you go through any of these canyons. And not only that, but you took a cigar, this is what starts fires, and you threw your cigar away. So then I made up a lie. <laughs> and I said to him, officer, I didn't throw, this is a true story that I said. I said, officer, I didn't throw the cigar away. I did stop smoking and I happened to have the cigar in my hand out of the window and it just slipped out of my hand. And he didn't want to, but he says, look, I saw you throw the cigar away. So I said to the officer, Look at it. You want to do me a favor? Now, if I threw it away, you just stop me. It can only be about a half a block away. I'll get into a car, into your car with you, and we'll drop back, we'll go back, and I'll prove to you that I did not, that the, that the cigar slipped out of my hand. I didn't throw it. 
So he laughed. He said, all right, get in the car. So we drove back, and sure enough, about a half a block, or a block, this cigar was lying there about this big. And I picked it up, and I gave it to the policeman. And I said, now, officer, do you really believe <laughs> that a stingy type SOB like myself would throw away a cigar this big? <laughs> Case dismissed. So, he laughed so hard, he thought that was very, very funny. He says, all right, you made me laugh, and that was funny. And I'm not going to give you a ticket, but do not smoke again when you go through. And that was the end of that. That's a funny story. So, and that's the only reason I brought it up, because I wanted to tell you this before, and I always forget. You want yeah. this? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> Freddie, you want it? I got another one if you want it. Huh? <laughs> He's yeah. a three for a dollar. You know? <laughs> Don't they make more expensive cigars? I've heard of two dollar cigars. I am, but no matter, you know, no friend of mine will ever give me a good cigar because they know I take two puffs and throw it away. Yeah, some of the people don't they keep their cigars in humidors down at stores and they go there and have their own yeah. uh, special humidor, very expensive cigars. Yeah, well, this isn't very interesting. What should we talk about now? <laughs> How about your party you had the other night? You and Mary. Uh, had some friends at a party the other night celebrating your anniversary. And it was a lovely party out at, um, what was the Chinese place? On Santa Monica. Yeah. Madame Wu's. We had our, Mary and I had our 47th Seven. wedding anniversary. 47 years. And you know that Mary and I get along great. What, what is the secret? Because I have not I don't been know. that fortunate. I think I love her. <laughs> Well, the secret, I think, is when you're compatible, when you, you get along, it isn't, sex isn't everything, you know. Damn it. But anyway. <laughs> We're going to come back and follow up on that in just a second. <laughs> Find out what is everything. <laughs> We'll be back after the short word of interest, and then... Freddy, I didn't mean that. Welcome back to uh, the marital game. We were talking about Jack and Mary being married 47 years and uh, how you get along. And then you're Be compatible. You ask me how yeah. we get along. We get along great. We, we've always gotten along great. I can't imagine being married to anybody else. Now, I do say something on the stage, but I don't think I've ever said it on television, that in the 47 years that we've been married, the way I tell it on the stage, is that if I were to say that we've never had a fight or an argument, you'd know I'd be lying. But I can truthfully say that Mary and I have never had an argument, let's say, or a fight big enough where the word divorce was used. Murder, yes. <laughs> Did you Glad ever, you let me in there. I don't like, like that. I remembered it from this day. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever separate at all? I mean, did you ever get mad where you moved Married out for a day or two? Married the first week we were married. First week? The first week, she didn't like a necktie that I wore. And we were 
No, about the first month that was we were married. And she didn't like a necktie, and she wanted me to change it, and I wouldn't change it, because I liked it. And she left and went home to Los Angeles, and I didn't see her for about three more weeks until I got there. Just because she didn't like she the necktie? Didn't, because I wouldn't change the necktie. I was stubborn, but I went back and I saw her, and she was glad to see me. <laughs> I had on a different necktie. But she <laughs> You know, I didn't wear the same necktie. In fact, I never wore it again. <laughs> now, this is it. This is the first necktie right there. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> now, we're going to show you a, a piece of tape from uh, Jack's show, which comes up tomorrow night. And I have not seen this myself. Uh, does this need... you want to tell them what happened on this? Yes. Because Let me tell I didn't you know what. you were going to leave this in Let the show. Let me tell you what I happened. I did this just for you. Yeah, you did it. You, you thought you were going to play me a dirty trick. Right. And here's what happened. He and I... In fact, you're on pretty early on the show. Yeah, right up front. I must, I must remember to tell everybody, to tell who's all on, the sh on the show. See, you're the first one on. Right. You got George Burns. That's right. Red George Fox. George Burns, Red Fox. Dinah Shore. Dinah Shore. The uh, DeFranco family. The DeFranco family with Tony DeFranco. Right. Who else have we got on? Me. Yeah. And you. Well, I said you. Oh, I good. said you were the first one. Good, good. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, when he made his exit, Johnny was supposed to come back and say one more thing and make an exit. So he came back and forgot what he was supposed to say. So he walked off, then he came back again and said the wrong thing and did this about four times. And finally, to make up for it, he came back the last time Don't and tell here's him. the clip this is, he did this to me. Here's the clip that you, this is what he looked like. This is classy comedy, folks. Classy comedy. Are you showing the first time? <laughs> you know. <laughs> now look, John, I'm trying to do a special and this is no time to talk business. It makes you look cheap. What? <laughs> I said it makes you look cheap. Look, Johnny, there's a time for everything. Money and everything. There's a time for business, a time to eat, a time to sleep. A time to make love? Oh, you remember, huh? <laughs> of course I remember. It's like roller skating. <laughs> Some things you never forget. <laughs> when, you, when you get angry, your eyes dance. Do you know that? They do? Yeah. You're a well, living doll. All right, well, do yeah. me a favor yeah. now. Get out of here, will you? Well, Get off the stage. All right. and let me carry oh, you on. Oh. We have a long show. All right. Yeah. And another thing. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. And I told you before, you're never going to be on my show again. Oh. Just remember that. All right. Okay. And I'll tell you something else. Wait a minute. I'm not coming to your party Saturday night, either. You weren't invited. <laughs> How did he find out? How did I find out? I'm catering it. <laughs> Try to be a nice guy. You know, he doesn't realize what a tough time I had finding that. I think you shot it and stuck it. <laughs> now, <laughs> real classy comedy. Now, now. Ladies and gentlemen. That was the third time we had done that yeah, particular that's scene. That's the now, thing. ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I did to him, and he doesn't know it till now. We left that that's, in my show. That's in tomorrow night. Well, I just did it to off. break you up. We, I, I'd blown that line about three times walking off, and I said, what could you do and all in a tuxedo and black tie that would be so klutzy? I says, you drop your pants. <laughs> but I never thought to. Did you Some ever resort Canadian. to that to get a laugh? Never. I walked on with no pants, but I never <laughs> dropped them like that. You are going to... I didn't mention this uh, on the opening of the show, because uh, I'm not going to tell them, but, uh, but next February the 14th, Valentine's Day, is your birthday, right. which is a lovely day to have a birthday. Um, it is, coming up. Uh, have you told people yet that you're over 39? 
I mean, officially. Well, I don't like to tell my right age, because, uh, let him guess. Anybody who wants to guess over 39 is all right with me. How old? Eight. You're right. <laughs> he knows. Do you believe that? He knows. Everybody in the world would be a liar here if anybody said you even look close to 80, and I mean that. I know, but it scares the hell out of me, just the same. <laughs> no, it, it shouldn't. I feel better now at 80. I will be 80. I feel better than when I was actually 39. You know why? Because when I was 39, I was still some kind of a star, wasn't I? You were certainly, of course. All right. So, but I was worried because at 39, you worry, you want to sustain, you want to remain a star. But now, at this age, where are they going to throw me? <laughs> They're not going to throw me out any place. It's too late. So that I'm not worried right. anymore. I know they're, they're going to have a big series of parties for, I understand, down in Palm Springs to celebrate yeah. uh, the 80th birthday. 80 years, that's, that's remarkable. Well, I hope I just have, uh, can sustain a third as long of the time as you have in this business, really. And George look, Burns is almost as old as I am. Uh, George is, what, two years younger? I two years younger. 78. Yeah, he's 78. I think he looks older than I do, don't you? <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean it. George, 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 I didn't mean it. You know, you know what he does on George, our George, show? George, well, come on. You know what he does on my show, which you'll see tomorrow night? We play two statues in Rome. And we're supposed to be 500 years old. And he insists on singing. And we trained about 20 uh, pigeons. That the minute he starts, and we got him trained. You can train all animals to do anything. <laughs> as soon as he sings, these 20 pigeons jump on his head. <laughs> and you'll see it in the show tomorrow. <laughs> That's He's fun. very funny in that show. That's tomorrow. Eight, eight, eight You're to, funny too eight to on the show. Thank you. Everybody it was, it was fun being on, on the show. show. We'll take a brief Red pause. Fox is funny on the show. We'll be right back after this. Us and uh, those of you who follow Jack's radio show over the years remember his, the wonderful cast, uh, of course, with Mary and Don Wilson and uh, Rochester, Dennis Day, Phil Harris, even going back to the days of Kenny Baker, one of the men on his show who played so many different characters and, as you probably know, has done the voices of most of the famous cartoon characters from Bugs Bunny to Porky Pig to Barney Rubble to the Flintstones. And we'll talk about some of the other things that Mel has done on your show over the years. He's, uh, he's really some artist. Would you welcome Mr. Mel Blank? Mel. Good, thank you, Johnny. Be -be 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 -be. Is that it? <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> That's a remark. How many years did you work before people actually saw you doing anything? I mean, you, you people who do voices and start with voices uh, do very well in the business. A lot of my friends like uh, Junie Foray and other people who do the voices, everybody hears them but don't but very seldom see them until television came along, right? That's right. I started uh, radio in 1927. Give you have an idea how I'm older than Jack Benny. No. <laughs> no. no yeah. You started that early? 1927, a program in Portland, Oregon called the uh, Hoot Owls. 
in which I sang a song. My brother Henry accompanied me, and uh, I sang this crazy little song. Yeah. Wanna eat, wanna eat, wanna eat it. <laughs> How does one get into that rather uh, small group of people who do voices? Uh, you, you show up, or do people say, we want a voice of something, and you go in and audition for a particular character? Or? No, I, uh, I tried for a year and a half to get into Schlesinger cartoons. And uh, this uh, head of the company, or head of the voice department, kept saying, uh, we have all the voices we need, we don't uh, need anybody. And I kept this up for every two weeks I'd go there, and uh, he kept saying the same thing. I said, just listen to me anyway. And uh, he kept saying, I have all the voices we need. Finally, the guy died. Not nice to laugh at the dead. For those of oh. Well, anyway, I went to the next guy in charge, a guy by the name of Treg Brown, and uh, I told him that uh, I would like to have him hear me. He said, sure, what can you do? I auditioned for him. And then he said, great, would you do it for the directors? So I auditioned for the directors, and one of the directors said, uh, can you do a drunken bull? A drunken bull? Yeah, that had eaten some sour mash. And I had to... <laughs> that's not him. And, uh... Well, I... that's from that picture you saw. <laughs> yes. And uh, I thought, uh, yes, I said, I can do a drunken bull. He said, how would it sound? I said, well, it sounded a little, a little like you was looking for some, some sour mash. <laughs> he said, great, what are you doing Tuesday? He said, let's say Tuesday. I wasn't doing a darn thing. I said, yeah, I think I can make it all right. Just squeeze and it in. that was the first voice I did in the cartoons. And the director that asked me to do it was Frank Tashlin, who's now yes. a director in pictures. I certainly is. How did Bugs Bunny come about? Did, now, did you audition for that? No, they again? showed me a picture of uh, this crazy little character. And they said he was tough, told me what the storyline was going to be. And I thought, uh, let's see now, which is the toughest voice in the United States? It's either Brooklyn or the Bronx. So I said, why don't I put the two together? So uh, that's what come out, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> what, is funny? You know, what, is, what, what is funny, when they do these voices to cartoons, and we tried to just show it one night, and it didn't work because you, we couldn't get the proper setup, is when they show a cartoon or an animated picture, and you see people like Mel and Alan Reed and June Foray and Paul Fries and somebody who do a lot of these voices, watching the cartoon and standing around a microphone, four adult people doing these voices is the funniest thing. That is hysterical. They should film that. You know, grown men going, <laughs> and going home after a day's work. Now, for years, when I listened to Jack's show, and he did. Well, get... they filmed everything yeah. that he did on my show, and he did all the characters. He did. Uh, no, yeah, the first place you did the train announcer, didn't you? Oh, the, how did you do that? The, the train show. leaving on track five uh, for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Come on, there. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd add something. <clears throat> don't get off at Coop, come on, there. We don't stop there. <laughs> you know, for years now. People oh, wait, who lived back in the Midwest one... didn't know there was a place as Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. We thought we never heard of such places. We thought let, they were making let, them up. Let me tell you, we did one show. He stopped in the middle of Cook for a long time, and I said something, and then listen to what he said. Do the one where you said Anaheim, Azusa, and Cook. Anaheim, Azusa. Train, and start with train leaving. Train leaving on track five for Anaza, Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Oh, no. Among the... No! <laughs> Damn it, you spoiled it. Oh, no. Oh, a cucumber. Doing a... Oh, let's try it again. Let's try Are it again. tired of it? <laughs> no, no. I wanted to hear the way you actually did it. Train leaving on track. Give him my signal. This is the rehearsal. Right. Try it. Rehearsal, all right. You can go out. Okay. All right. Right. Train, train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Oh, no. Oh, yes. A manga. A manga. A manga. A manga. <laughs> I remember. He does. Forty, forty years ago, I don't remember. Forty it. years, he remembers everything. What now, else? What when I used to listen to your show, I'm going to ask him this. And you would go out in the Maxwell and start the car. Yeah. I'd say those are the wildest sound effects I've ever heard in my life because most mechanical things are done by a, by a recorded thing. And Mel used to do it when I'd go see the radio show. You'd, Mel would stand up on the stage. Yeah, I, I used to say... And Rochester. the audience would go into hysterics. I used to say, Rochester, get the Maxwell started, because I want to leave. And 
Mel would be the Maxwell. Gee, you ought to have a mic right near you for the. Can we, we can, have we can drop this? Can you drop this Just down? Put in the picture. Don't worry. Yeah. About it. So I said, get Rochester, get the Maxwell started, and he would go out, and you'd hear the Maxwell, and this would this would be it. Go ahead. Well, still sounds like that without him. You know. <laughs> and the studio audience used to fall down from laughter just well, watching Mel well, do I'm these trying things. Freddie's trying to tell us something. English, English horse. The English huh? horse. Oh, how they tried oh, to catch wait, him. Wait, wait, you got to hear this. <laughs> you know, we used to do weeks of westerns called Buck Benny Rides Again. Right, but Andy Devine. So we'd have a horse. Andy Devine would be on. He'd call me Buck and everything. So he would do the horses. So first, do just the horse, the Winnie. <laughs> That's right. Now, one day my writers and I got together and we said, let's play a dirty trick on Mel Blanc and see what he does at rehearsal. He must comment on it. So we said, let's write in an English horse. <laughs> For no reason. Now, we thought, certainly, he must say to us, what the hell does this mean, an English horse? He never said a word to us, never opened his mouth. When it came time to do the English horse, this is what he did, and we didn't even know it. That is great. What else did we do? You did the seesaw. Yeah. yeah that that the Mexican? Yes, you did. Used to do the Mexican... Uh... Always the Mexican routine. And it always went the same way, and people screamed at the same things. And I would see him, he'd be a Mexican. Let's say I'd be at a railroad station. Do you know the routine you used to do when you did the treasure, the Sierra Madre? And you kept saying, see? Remember yeah, that's that? it. You know that's that? the routine. So I would say, uh, I'd go I'm up to him, you. and I'd say, pardon me, uh... Are, are you leaving for Mexico City? Si. <laughs> Is your train late? Si. Have you... <laughs> have you been waiting here a long time? Si. <laughs> What's your name? Si. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a friend of yours sitting with you? Si. <laughs> Your sister? Si. I'm afraid to ask this next one. What's her name? Sue. <laughs> Sue? Si. <laughs> oh, what else? Where'd we go from there? What does she do for a living? Huh? What does she oh, do yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one. Funny, I said to her, what thing? This wasn't even the script. I said, what does she do for a living? So. <laughs> so? So? See. <laughs> oh, those are great routines. Great. Oh, those were some of the best constructed comedy moments ever on radio. So little dialogue. Great construction. Boom, 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 and then the topper, and then the topper. Mm -hmm. and uh, We'll take a brief pause. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
is a young lady making her television debut this evening. Her name is Maria Muldauer, and she's a, a new talent, singing talent, who can be seen at the Troubadour here in Los Angeles from tomorrow night through Sunday. This is her first record album. It's simply called Maria Muldauer. Would you welcome her, please? Maria Muldauer. written by a good friend of mine, Kate McGarrigal, called The Work Song. Mr. 
We'll do this. Oh, yes, right here. After this word from Bud Gentle, Excedrin PM, the pain reliever that helps you get a good night's sleep. What did I say? I don't know. Hollywood, some of our guests stay at the new Sheraton Universal Hotel, one of the more than 300 Sheraton hotels and motor inns throughout the world. My next guest is the uh, originator of the award-winning troupe called The Muppets, uh, who become great favorites on Sesame Street. He has a show coming up called The Muppets Valentine Special with Mia Farrow, which will be aired on January 30th. Would you please welcome Jim Jensen.
you know, I've, um, I've learned to walk around inside my own head. Now, that may sound silly to you, but it's been very, very helpful to me. But let me show you how it's done, in case you want to try it. Now, when you first come to the brain, you have to pass through the medulla oblongata. That's where things like breathing and the heartbeat and glands are controlled. It's kind of like plumbing. It's not very interesting. But if you keep going, you cross into the cerebrum. And that's where all your thoughts are. You know, when I first came to my cerebrum here, my thoughts scattered all over. The place was a mess. Old mathematical formula, bits of poetry, and telephone numbers were all mixed up together. It was terrible. Over the years, I've been able to organize. Now, in this part of my brain, for instance, I keep thoughts about my family. There goes some family thoughts. That's a great family. Here's my wife, parents, my Uncle Ray. There goes Cousin Barbara. My nephew Evan, Uncle Charlie. Yep. Uncle Charlie. We can't stand each other. I needed to refile him under enemies. Anyway, I, I think you get the idea. Say, now that we're here, let me show you some of my good thoughts. I have a special section of extra good thoughts that I'm very proud of. They're right over here. Oh, yeah. evil thoughts too. I, I guess everybody does. Hey, you want to see my evil thoughts? Let's keep them over here in this part of my brain. And then greedy thoughts. Gluttony. Heat. Lust. Hey, well, that's enough of that. Uh, let's, let's go on to something nicer. I've got a great collection of uh, personal memories right over this way and oh I almost forgot to get to that part of my mind we have to pass through another area my fears it's a little scary but uh, we'll go fast okay I think you can see how organizing your brain like this can be very helpful what now we're getting to the fears <laughs> I hate this part oh boy spiders man I hate spiders That's over with. At least there's an advantage to lumping all your fears together so, so they don't get mixed up with other things. <laughs> That's a little fear I must have gotten up with um, But here, here's, here's a cottage where we spent summers. <laughs> don't mix up there. There's, uh, well, there's the high school when I was... Oh boy. Well, something's going wrong here. No, no, what's that? No. This is all wrong. It's not supposed to... Oh no. Huh? I'm out of control here. Huh? Get out of here. Well, uh, I wonder if it would help the fight file things alphabetically. <laughs>
Hello there, John. Hello, Kermit. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. That's Kermit, of course. This is Jim Henson, who was the originator of this whole thing. That was, that was a very novel concept. The, uh... That's a piece we did. Uh, actually, we did that some time ago, and we right. did it on your show. Yes, that's right. I remember. I don't know, four or five years very, ago. Kermit, if I remember, is one of the original members of the, the whole Muppets, right? Oh, yeah. Listen, I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been here since the beginning, you know. <laughs> Sure. I was about uh, about uh, 17 years ago. 17 years ago. Well, you haven't changed. When I first came on the scene. You haven't changed a bit. Oh yeah. Yeah, handsome as ever. Thank you. Well, it's actually uh, it's a it's a new uh, it's a new outfit that I wear. <laughs> I get rejuvenated every couple of years, you know. <laughs> did you uh, work with Mia Farrow in the show you got coming up, Kermit? Oh, did I ever? Yeah. Oh, listen, is the sky blue? Is the grass green? Did I work with Mia Farrow? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. She's a sweet lady. Yeah, I'll bet she is. Are you going to do a little number for us tonight? She was pregnant, too. She was, oh, she was pregnant yeah. during the show. No, I didn't do it. Pregnant. Well, don't look at me, Kermit. <laughs> uh, no, it's a show about love, you know. So. Love? Sure. Are you going to sing for us tonight or do a number or, or something? Well, you know, if, whatever you did well, like. Sure. If you, feel, if you feel up to it. Well, I did, um, I did a song uh, called Green. You know that song? Oh, yes, it's not easy being green. You noticed that, too. Yes. Uh, I do that on Sesame Street, and uh, I could do that for okay. you now. If, uh, <clears throat> like. A little song by Joe Raposo. It goes like this. <clears throat> it's not that easy being green. Having to spend each day the color of the leaves. When I think it could be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that. It's not that easy being green, having to spend each day the color of the leaves. When I think I could be nicer being red or yellow or gold, something much more colorful like that. But green's the color of spring And green can be cool and friendly like And green can be big like an ocean Or important like a mountain Or tall like a tree when green is all there is to be, it could make you wonder why. But why wonder, why wonder, I'm green, it'll do fine. It's beautiful, and I think it's what I want to be. That's, uh, that's the song. I'll show you how, I I'll tell you how far I gone I am in the show. I'm sitting watching the dumb frog <laughs> this getting wrapped this up. This little louse is the hit of the show. <laughs> Following a frog. Louse. We'll uh, be right back with uh, Dr. Stillman after a word from one of our sponsors.
Have no fear, still he's here, our good friend, Dr. Erwin Maxwell Stillman, who says 1,500 calories a day keeps the blubber away is with us. Would you welcome the originator of the quick weight loss water diet, Dr. Erwin Maxwell Stillman. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, okay. Doc, you seem to have a book with you. Yes, I <laughs> I have something that I finally got together and but however, yeah. it will not be on the in the bookstores oh, until April the first. What's what's this book under here? Some kind of pornographic book? You just put a book cover on it? I just put that's oh, right. I, uh, <laughs> little thing to read on the plane, huh, Doc? No, no, the truth You're... of the matter is. I've done extensive research uh -huh. on uh, on dieting, and I've decided to be a little bit more liberal with some of my uh, dieters. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I just met somebody outside who just lost 70 pounds on the diet, and uh, and and because of the liberality they have given. Right. Believe it or not. It's not the drinking man's diet, but they can drink, but there are special drinks that they can have only, and special wines that they can have. But you can have a little booze occasionally. But you can have it absolutely, within reason. Glad to hear that. Within reason. Yeah, you're looking in good shape. Well, all right. Yeah. Well, after all, this That's is- not the look. This is old timers. I remember Maggie Klein, and uh, Bite Williams. I don't know whether you remember Bite Williams, the soft shoe man. I yeah, used to say. You do remember. Of course. Well, with Ziegfeld from with Ziegfeld. That, that, well, I used to see it in vaudeville, and I used to go to Charles E. Blaney's. Well, what do you the think MVP he was in? The, uh, the luggage business? He was uh... a. <laughs> no, First I... place, I want to ask you something. Do you think I'm thin? Fairly well, thin? Well, I tell you. Uh, I'm not fat, am I? No, the reason you reached 80 years of age yeah. is because you have really watched your diet and the amount I of food. eat everything. Ah, uh, <laughs> Well, that's it, sir, that No, 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 no. That's exactly what I was going to ask Johnny. Yeah. I saw Johnny before he came on, and I looked at him. Uh, uh, yes, you were feeling my bones. That's or? right, and I looked at your shape, and I looked at your pelvis, and so forth, and yes, I yes. tell you, those stirrups are cold too. <laughs> I, I haven't seen Johnny's pelvis. Uh, <laughs> I only, only I show it once a but month. But believe it or not, your ideal weight, yeah. your ideal weight, and what I would like to know is how you really diet. He says he eats everything. No, I, was uh, I, I eat was absolutely oh, anything. I, I don't eat everything. I eat anything I want. Uh, but do you eat, are you a consistent either? No, I have snack during the day. I eat when I'm hungry. Well, then that's the end. Then in my new book, I have to... Oh! <laughs> in my new book... Did this come out while we're on the air? Johnny Carson's He wrote this while he was sitting here. <laughs> I was only... It's it's a a I don't eat everything. It's a doctor's quick eat. writing book. Are you really? <laughs> I don't. Anybody will pick up a cigar, you know, and hold on to it. You're, you're really... You chew that thing to the end. You know, that's worse than what you call smoking. That goes down into your stomach and uh, produces... And makes me feel lousy. <laughs> if that's you want that's to not, know that's something, not good and either, that's what huh? keeps me from eating. No, it's, 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 it's very... A lousy cigar keeps me from eating. Oh, no, three for a dollar is really cheap, I'm surprised. <laughs> That's cheap, cheap for a dollar? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so well, I'll never spend another dime on it, I'll tell you that. No, no, you ought to get... Uh, you, yeah, the average cigar is worth a dollar. A good smoker is worth a dollar. And I, I'm sure you can afford it. After all, we read the age where we don't have to worry about whether we'll have enough of the next year and the next year. So <laughs> let, let, let's, let's go whole hard and we're doing it. <laughs> 20 years from now, I won't spend more than a dollar for three cigars. Oh, yes, you will. You'll wait and see. You'll get it. Well, you're going to be 80 not too far off. Well, I know, but I have two he, I'm a youngster compared to him. I have, I have two years to go before I'll, well, be, I'll be 80. But I, I'm not... But to be spry as he is at 80, and the way he walks on here, and the way... Of course, I like the way he walks, you know. <laughs> I, I, I like that idea, you know. I, sometimes I wonder whether... When you walk that way, you got to stay that, healthy, Doctor. No, sir, I, 
I walked like that when I, I was 30. I sometimes wonder whether he's going to the gynecologist. I said. <laughs> Well, isn't it, when people get older, shouldn't they lose weight as they get older a little bit every year? Oh, absolutely. You should get a little lighter. Absolutely. If you really want to see the wonders of the world that are to come, regardless mm -hmm. of all the, uh, the misery that's around, you have to stay thin. And I just came in from Florida yesterday, and I can tell you that the thin people are in predominance. I'm talking about thin men. Thin you men. See, the women somehow or other are about 15, 20, 30 pounds overweight, but they seem to carry it. But they have one thing in their favor. God was very good know. to them. He first he gave them estrin, if everybody knows about estrin, and that has something to do with menses and so forth and so on. But he also made them small, you see, and that's a wonderful thing. Because in the evolutionary way, we did not in our heart didn't grow mm -hmm. with a height. And now we have people six foot three, four, five, and six, and so forth, but their hearts are very small, and they're straining themselves, even though they're right. normal weight. So Try to so keep your weight down. It's clear, oh, that. keep your weight down. And, and for whatever it is, don't worry about, uh, uh, about dieting at all. Just do it day by day, and I'm sure You'll do just like this fellow just did, 70, he lost 70 pounds. Anybody can do it, if they have to. But the best losers, really and truly, are those who only have to lose 15 or 20 or 25 right. pounds. I like those best. And that's the greatest, the greatest success stories of all, yeah. are those. We'll take a, a break. We're coming right back. I want to mention before we leave, tomorrow night is a, is a big night on NBC. Jack's show is from 8 to 9, and Bob Hope is right behind you. You're back to back tomorrow night with Bob Hope, we all, right? We, we usually do that. Well, that's great. I'm glad he's on after me, because he's funnier than I am. <laughs> oh, I don't he's know. He's at least as funny as I am. <laughs> Doctor, thank you for being with us again. Oh, my pleasure. I hope you'll come into Florida every so often and pay us a visit, will you? Oh, it'll be. I thank, thank you very and much. And stay healthy. Thank you, Jack. Mel, it was a great pleasure having you here tonight. Thank you. Really, Thanks. great to see you again. Tomorrow night, Paul Williams, Adrian Barbo, Buck Henry, Bert Condry, and pain expert, Dr. Rod Robert Nidifer. Right? Good night. Uh -oh.